So the big question is this, how do investors like us who don't have a PhD in finance or millions to start investing, how do we grow our bank accounts to build real savings and retirements and yet still have the time to do what we really love? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answer. So you look at some of these giant, giant, giant companies and they're hedging their risks by having plan B's, by having options. And they're putting up just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of work, a little bit of effort. Um, so that like, if they do have a screw up, like they still have a plan B, you know, great example. Um, whew, excuse me. Um, the tire on the bike, um, kind of just like exploded a little bit, which isn't that great. <laughs> you guys might remember we started off with a little bit of a flat, but there's kind of nowhere to, to fill it up. So I was making this like pretty harsh turn and basically like it just came up on one side of the wall. Um, and this is a, this is not a normal tire. It's a very, very, very stiff tire. Um, so definitely not the easiest thing to sort of like manipulate by hand. Um, oh my God, there's a giant bike right the way. What? Um, but anyway, it's because, um, of this tire, right? Like, like what's this? It's not a problem, you know, like I got to just, what do you do? Right. You have a plan B. So like, you know, like it might not be able to like ride the bike but I can still kind of like push it home, right? There's always another option. There's, there's always another opportunity to make stuff happen. Um, and so what, what's option two, what's plan B? All you have to do is what? You have to walk. And the moment that you can do that, like everything shifts, right? Because it's no longer, you know, just the first option. You always have sort of that, that second stand. Um, and so it applies sort of in, in all industries or all markets. It's not just the work that, hey, because you always have a way out. And so that's why, like, oh, my God, it's just so, so, so important to, like, know your downside, know your risk, um, and always kind of have, like, that stop loss on the, on the trade. Because um, if you don't, you know, you can, get, you can get messed up pretty hard. So for me, like, I always know, you know, my risk. Um, something that happens pretty often, which <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, man, but uh, I don't have the best luck with bikes. I'm not a big fan of bikes. Like, my dad loves biking. Um, and he's a huge, 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 huge biker, uh, which is cool, um, but just not really ever my thing. Um, I like running. Running's fun. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. And so I don't know if it's just like me or if it's the way I attract luck or maybe it's just my negative energy, <laughs> but, um, I never really have the best luck with bikes. So I think like, if I can think about like the times I've recorded this podcast, probably like six to 10 times, maybe more. I feel like it's probably more, um, out of, I don't know, like a hundred episodes, like probably I got a, a 10% rate, like 10% of the times I bike to school, I basically just like my bike just breaks. <laughs> And so I end up with just walking home for like an hour. Um, so it's also this idea of like, if something doesn't work, like don't do it. I don't know why I still bike places. Like it's so, so, so much faster and such a better use of, of my time to just take like some Uber or something. Um, but I do this for you guys so I can make this podcast. Um, and it, I don't know, man, it's, it's got questionable results. I'm sat like 30 guys stare me down in the west say like Duh! because apparently like this bike is pretty messed up um just don't have the the best luck with with bikes yeah i don't know it's not my thing those scooters though those scooters are sick like i love them um definitely recommendo some scooters um not as much bikes not as much bikes but hopefully it will all work out and it'll be cool. So anyway, going back to this idea of um, looking at, at things that pop up, not as problems, but as challenges. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, right, like this endeavor that just popped up, what is this? It's not a problem, right? Like I don't walk home, big deal. It's a challenge to push through. It's a challenge to create some awesome, awesome stuff for you guys. It's a challenge to be more, a challenge to do more. And, whew, excuse me. And a challenge to achieve more, right? Um, because it stretches your mind. I remember, oh my God, this is so powerful. And then we'll get back to the story of the CEO because, because that's really great too. Um, we, were, we were at this big party at the end of every cross country season. We would have, and then in the track season, um, we had this big banquet at this restaurant. And we would sort of like go to the restaurant. It was kind of like downtownish. And we'd walk in, it was like this American pub. Um, there were like bar stools everywhere and there were always, you know, tons of booths and people sitting around having a fun time. And we would walk upstairs and go up these back stairs, like everybody on the whole team and all of their parents would come and, and everyone would go up these stairs and we'd go into this big giant like party room. And in this big party room, like, you know, you probably fit like hundred people. And so there were like tables everywhere and there was just 
like a huge, huge, huge banquet, tons of carbs, tons of food, mostly tons of carbs. There was always pasta. Um, it was really good. Like there was a lot of carbs. I mean, it was, it was pretty sick. Um, and, and we would have like this huge, huge banquet. We look like all the big, all the running photos from the, from the season. And, um, you know, basically it was, it was just like a giant party. Right. And as we would always sort of have this event out at the end of you know everything, um, they'd always have like the seniors that were, you know, leaving, um, come up and like say a word or something if they wanted to. Um, usually you had like one or two guys that would come up and, you know, say something. And, you know, we're sitting there and we were sitting through like this big award ceremony. Everyone gets like, you know, recognition, builds up public face, make people feel significant and special by, you know, giving them praise in public, which is like ridiculously awesome and super cool. And what would happen after that was super, super interesting. So everybody would, you know, go through their praise and literally like every single runner, every single person there would stand up and then walk across the front of this big event space. Um, and kind of just like a huge, 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 you know, ego boost. It was just super, super big thing for everybody. Right. And then at the very end, you have the coach talk and then you should have like some of the seniors talk. And so I remember like, you know, the first year I did it, um, I was junior. Right. So, um, at the end of the season, you know, I just, I didn't get to do anything. I was just like, you know, um, it was pretty cool. I dropped my time by like 10 minutes on the 5k, which was like, Hey, that's pretty solid. Um, which is fun. It was really fun. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, at the end, you just kind of chill out. But the end of, um, senior year track season, you know, I was sitting there, sitting in my seat and, you know, I was looking out and, you know, I was like, you know, school was over at that point. It was like the last, you know, couple of weeks of school and basically like everyone was getting ready to go home and not go home I and mean, go to college. Right. So, um, while sitting there and I this crazy thing happens. I just have like this spark. I'm like, dude, you know what? Make it happen. Um, I get in line, you know, to, to, to speak. And there's a couple guys in front of me and they go and they're like, you know, thanks so much. It was, they were super nice, super fun stuff. Um, so I walk out on the stage and, and I tell this story and this story, I think really, really applies to this situation as I kind of sit here. Um, and I'm thinking back of like that podcast I recorded, uh, months and months and months ago. And I feel so bad because I know some of the audio files got like ex just brutally destroyed. Um, by, by my iPhone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so hopefully you guys heard that one. I don't know if it made, I think it probably made it through the wreckage, which is good, which is great. Most of them did, which is solid. Um, you just have to keep pushing, right? Like you can't focus on, on making everything perfect. You can't focus on everything like being a thousand percent correct. You just have to go out there and do it. Right. Um, like for instance, I'm running like Facebook ads right now and marketing and Instagram spotlights. Um, you know, a sizable figure, um, of like ad dollars right now to this, you know, um, it's like this super cool, like drop shipping thing I made is like RGB gaming. And I'm like really passionate about it. Cause that's kind of where I came from, right? Like, you know, long, 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 long time ago, um, before I really discovered, you know, well, actually, honestly, like before I really like started to like actually have pressure in my life to really do things and produce, you know, sort of like before my dad left and like when it was still cool to just like do nothing, like I would just kind of play video games all day. Um, and it was like pretty sweet. I got really, really, really good. I mean, I was really young, like super young, but I mean, I was competing, like I was ranked top 500 in Team Fortress and in, um, Overwatch and just like would play like thousands of hours in these video games. Um, just cause it was just like, I don't know, man, video games are like addictive and, and crazy, crazy fun, but it's also like something that you have to get over. Um, so you know my brother for a while, he was and still sort of just like addicted to these, these games and like, oh my God, it's, it's so difficult because like. It's so fun, but you have to ouch, 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 ouch. You have to do it sort of like with respect to, you know, your goals. Right. And so like for me, like I'll still may, you know, do some fun stuff with my buds on the weekend. Um, maybe not like, I mean, like, I don't know. I probably played like a cumulative 30 minutes of video games in the past, like 12 months, um, which is crazy because I used to play like eight hours a day every single day. Um, but then I, I realized, you know, like, like, dude, this isn't getting me anywhere, you know, like, Anyway, that's sort of, that's sort of my background. It was a long, 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 long time ago when like, that was like who I was, you know, it was like, I really want to, I want to play games like for the rest of my life, but I realized that like, I was going to have a real impact, um, or really have any sort of, you know, growth whatsoever. Like the path isn't in staying, you know, a kid your whole life. It just, just doesn't, just doesn't work. You know, it's just not valued particularly much 
uh, by society. I know you can point to like, you know, all the streamers or, you know, YouTuber or whatever. Um, they're making six, seven, eight figures. Um, but, you know, you just can't really, I don't know, if that's your passion, like that's awesome. Um, but you got to focus on if you're feeling your highest and best potential. And for me, it's, it's, it, just, it just doesn't make sense. And for most people, I just, there's just so much more that's out there. Um, just waiting, you know, to, to be taken, right? And I don't know, I found that power in financial markets and it, it changed my life, um, which is pretty sick. So anyway, so I, like, I was playing video games like all the time for like years and years and years and years. And I just loved it. It was super, super fun. And so, you know, as you look at like building online business assets or just, you know, online, um, yeah, I mean, assets really, you just build stores and you create income from, it's pretty awesome. Um, I was like, okay, well, I'll sell, you know, RGB gaming mice and then I'll upsell them what, you know, like keyboards or, and, you know, what else does somebody buy when they buy a mouse, you know, keyboard, mouse, um, I don't know, uh, a mouse pad, a, uh, uh, headset, you know, and kind of theme it all together. Um, so like I'm running traffic of that and then on the thank you page or, you know, um, the end of it, you know, I'm like, Hey, watch this webinar. And then I get like, Oh my God, I'm so excited for you guys. I'm sort of perfecting like the nine to noon webinar, but I'm like, ah, it's so fun. I give this like super fun webinar, like this information about, you know, investing in the stock market and my stock market is the coolest thing ever. And like how to find the top 80% of stocks that attract 1% of gains and how to trade like the Wolf of Wall Street with nothing more than a four function calculator. Um, and how like, um, Oh my God. It's, it's so much fun. It, it was I like, basically like the deal was I had this Instagram thing, the, this deal I did and everything went live like on Thursday of this week. Um, or maybe it was last week. I feel like it was this week though. It was definitely last week though. And so like I start making this presentation on Tuesday night and I'm like, dude, Oh crap. I gotta make this happen because you put yourself, you know, in a strict deadline, you put yourself on, on the pressure and, um, and you'll produce, you'll produce, you know, tons and tons and tons. If you just give yourself, you know, a strict hardcore a deadline and um, you make it happen, which is just kind of ridiculously cool. So we um, basically just started just doing it, right? And um, just kept making it, making it, making it. And I just kind of spent like 24 hours making this presentation, which is awesome, right? Um, and it came out like ridiculously well. Um, tied it together like ah, i'm so excited it's, it's just been so much fun and so i put this whole presentation together and then i basically spent like an hour and a half two hours just like screaming at a microphone um and getting recording this presentation um and then i get it all edited and and oh my god it was just so much energy and power and um just such game-changing content that really is just it's insane um but it was sort of geared towards this audience of like people um that had just purchased like this this rgb gaming mouse and all these other accessories right and so you put that on the thank you page and it basically says, ouch, uh, excuse me, excuse me. You know, it's the same offer as, um, as on I Need Secrets, which I probably should maybe change, maybe include the upsells in it, I don't know. Um, but the offer is the same thing. It's like, you know, get um, like what, $11,176 of, of these bonuses um, completely for free when you get your free copy of uh, Nine to Noon book, which is like ridiculously cool, right? And so that was like the whole presentation. Um, and then basically like, I'm just selling them on like how to invest in and how come investing is like the coolest thing ever. Um, and sort of stretching out like some of the Nine to Noon um, content and then just a little bit more stories, and a little bit more content, which is pretty exciting. Like I'm super, it's, it's pumping up. Um, and a lot of cool stuff I'm super excited to teach and implement in uh, the members area, which is like, ah, so cool. Um, and so at the end of it, I send them over to like the 9 to noon site. And like I said, I've had like maybe 10 or 20 people like just go and buy the free book. And like the problem is like you buy the book and it just like it sent you to Google because like, like all that page redirects to Google because like this shit's not finished. And so like I, I have this severe problem of like doing no advertising whatsoever. Um, and yet there are tons and tons and tons of people that just keep like trying to buy stuff from me and I'm not ready for them to buy stuff. And I have guys literally right now that are on recurring monthly subscription for like the 90 new implementation members area. And, um, and they, they just got like billed and they haven't even like the, the content it's recorded, but it's not edited <laughs> because I got to edit the second off. At least my team has that in the second episode first. So it's, and they're like, dude, don't worry about it. This is so valuable. It's it's like nothing, man. I totally get it. Um, and it's it's just, it's so nice to have for that, that supportive community. Um, but it's pretty crazy. So like the point with that is like, 
in no way was I ready to launch that. And yet you do it anyway because you'll freaking figure it out when you're under pressure. You'll figure it out when you need to make it work. Um, and that's really the point of it. Oh, crap. That's okay. We're going to make it work, guys. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. Um, our bike is going to go very slow, but we're going to make it work. So that's sort of sort of the goal there is to just like go and, and go hard. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you can do that, like, I mean, you get, you get anything your grasp because so many people, they just struggle to start. Um, but it all kind of comes down to confidence. So going back to the story of the, the CEO guy who um, basically raised like hundreds of billions of dollars based on nothing but his own ingenuity and, and fizzazz, um, this guy, what did he have? He had social skills, that was it. And it was worth so, 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 so much to him. Because your influence over others is, is everything. Um, and all he did was what? He started going hard. He started raising money. And he just kept going. He never stopped. And every you know issue that he faced was simply a challenge to overcome with his team. And he freaking made it happen. Which is just ridiculously cool. Um, it's just so, 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 so powerful. And it reminds me, I had this, um, this Uber driver, Daniel, last night. Um, before, I, before I made the venture without the so, so necessary papers. Um, Daniel, he was from Nigeria and um, his parents were kind of well off. And so he was able to, to make it to the States, which is, which is really, really like, that's awesome, right? Um, very, very cool, cool stuff. He said economics in uh, like a private university in Nigeria. And I was like, what? You said economics? That's so cool. Um, and he did like, you know, analysis of like individual companies in certain markets which is like cool man cool you didn't do stocks but you know it's okay not everybody is prepared for the market so market i mean dude it's oh my god it's so much fun um so anyway as we're we're going through this ride i'm like i'm trying to learn and learn more about what he does because now he works here as a he, do, he does like sales um so he sort of like had a, a transition in his career. He's doing really well. He's having a great time. Um, he's just doing Uber at night, support his kid, which is like, ah, so awesome. So, 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 so cool. Um, and he's just trying to make like some extra cash. And I'm like, dude, oh, you got to like, yeah, invest, dude. Um, that, I didn't really say that. I was just talking to him, learning about him. Because the key, right, is, is to be interested in other people, not, you know, pushing yourself on them. Um, so that's exactly what I did. And I learned so much from this guy that I would literally have never, ever, 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 ever even like thought possible and, and never would have gotten if I focused, you know, on, on myself or me or, or what I'm passionate about. Like, no, right? You have to focus on, on other people um, and care about other people. And the moment you do that, like, dude, everything changes. So this guy just like opens up and it, it all kind of changed um, about a minute after I got in the car. I mean, I'm just like, you guys got to understand. Like you have to be perpetually happy and perpetually grateful of other people. Um, and as soon as you do that, like everything changes. I remember um, just like 20 or 30 or 40 minutes ago, you know, having some uh, some awesome cheat day pancakes and they were so good. I mean, oh my God, carbs are so amazing. And um, and I think I'm probably like walking up this staircase and like 10 feet away or 20 feet away from me is, is Lynn, right? And she's like, you know, super fun. Um, uh, she works at, at the kitchen, right? And so she works at the food court or some of the food court. I mean, like they're like little restaurant places sort of, um, but she works in the dining hall and like, she, she calls out and screams at me and I'm like, ah, I scream back at her. And we're just like screaming across like this huge dining hall because like we have a connection and we care. Um, and so that's sort of the, the power of positivity. So I get in this guy's you know, car, I get in his Uber and he is just like, I'm just like on fire. I'm like, ah, it's so cool. It's such a cool place. Are you having an amazing night? Um, and within like a couple of minutes, you know, I learned like he does sales. And he was like, oh, I do sales. Like, wow, that's so cool. And he's like, you know what? I can tell just by, um, you know, being with you that like you'd be amazing at sales. Uh, and what he says next is just so, so, so crazy. He says, you know, 60% of all of this is just persona. It's just attitude. It's just personality. And the moment that you can like be the one person in the room that people actually want to be with and spend time with, Dude, it changes everything. Because now, instead of like forcing other people towards you, like literally I have so much business gravitating towards me. That, like, there's just not enough hours in the day, man. Um, and it, it's just, it's insane because like, it totally shifts the way that you're proceeding in the marketplace, right? Like if you have four bookings, 
for your one o'clock and your two o'clock and your three o'clock and your four o'clock and your five o'clock. And you have just an abundance of choice and you're constantly like in the, in the pressure. Um, oh, excuse me. It's going to force you to produce at a much faster rate and a much higher quality. Um, and the moment you do that, I mean, oh my gosh, everything's so powerful. And it's interesting because like, you know, most people, um, they, just, they don't work nights, right? And they just go hard, you know, maybe in the day or whatever. Um, but at night, it's like they quit, right? And it's tough because, you know, I remember um, this one girl, she, was, she had like, what, 800 employees. And she's like, literally just trying to hire people at night. And um, no one would do it, right? Nobody would come to work for her from like 5 to, you know, 2 a.m. Um, to train, train salespeople. Um, because so few people actually like have the, the drive and motivation and determination to make it happen. And their lies, which is, which is just, it's just awful, man. And so what happens, which is just like ridiculously crazy, um, is that like, just, she like would stay up till like 2 a.m. every day training these guys. And then wake up at eight the next day, go out and sell shit till five. And then go and train these guys again. And it was like constant, constant, constant grind. And what's that lead to? At least, the, you know, being a hundred man, which is just like, it's just crazy, right? And so if you can be like that person that's so in demand, that you literally don't even have time to sleep, you're going to just create huge, huge, huge amounts of wealth, which is really cool. Um, oh, this is such a fun day. Oh, man. We have, a, we have a long way to go, guys. Fortunately, I guess. I don't know. Oh, man. So, like, the bike, like, the battery died um, a little ways ago. And so, it's going a lot. Um, I don't know. Definitely not the... See, it's interesting because... At least when you look at markets, right? You're looking at it averages over time. Yeah. Ow! Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, and you're looking at, you know, if I make this trade 10 times, you know, on average, what's my profit going to be? On average, am I going to succeed? And, you know, if I take 10 ABCD setups and you have solid 3 to 1 in score ratios, like you're going to absolutely crush it, right? And it's just straight facts, right? And so if you do this, this idea of, you know, risk reward in real life, right? Like what's the risk of this tire going flat? I don't know, maybe 10%. Um, and then what's the reward? Well, the reward is, you know, I can bike to school um, and it's probably like a little bit slower than an Uber. Um, and I don't know, it, it saves me $6, right? Um, like, dude, is it, okay, so, you know, is it worth $6? for you know and uh, let's say okay so on average i don't know like the podcast i think is cool so like i don't think there's an element of value to that but also like dude i've got shit to do for like 30 hours of content to record this weekend and this is gonna cut into like literally a whole hour of it which is just like it's cool right because i get to give you guys a ton of value for free which is super fun but at the same time like you know we've got hard deadlines on these production dates and on these output dates and on these scale dates and like i have no choice but to meet these deadlines and so, like, a vast majority of the time, when you have side straws or you have push-outs, if you're fully booked, what that means is less sleep. Um, and so, like, is it worth an hour uh, less of sleep? Because for me, like, sleep is the most valuable thing. Um, and I value control of my time so, so, so much. And sleep is, like, one of the biggest parts of that. This idea that you want to have total and complete control over your life and, and your sleep, right? I mean, I'm huge, huge, huge fanatic. Like, I go to bed at 8. And like before, and like I need to have that sleep, or I just can't perform. Um, and I remember, oh my god, I remember a couple of, a couple of months ago. Um, we got like this this second camera for for a week. Um, and I'm a big fanatic using two cameras in my courses because it just looks so much more professional, and it adds so much more value to um to to clients, which I think is awesome. And so I've got like my my primary camera, and I need to like actually get some camera. Um, but I was I was borrowing this the second camera from the um the film studio, and we had it like for exactly it was like seven days for some kind of movie fest, which was super cool. And so uh, it was it was Wednesday, and when we got it, and so that meant I had to turn it in uh, next Wednesday. And so um, I filmed a, oh a ton of stuff you know, for the weekend, which is super cool. Um, uh, I think most of it was for YouTube, which is sweet. Uh, I'm so excited about that. Um, and then it, it's like Monday night and I'm thinking about like the design and the layout of the, of the nine new members era. And I'm like, dude, oh shit, I gotta like really add a ton of value here and change people's lives. 
And I realized that like one of the things I really wish I, I um, sort of could elaborate on is like the, the application of options. So like every option is super, super well in the book. Um, but I wanted to like go over like actually implementing it and scaling with it. So I think that is like ridiculously powerful and just a, a super big thing that I've sort of um, been moving a lot into now. Now that like once you get really, really, really good at like investing, you know, you can scale very, very efficiently with options. We just put in a huge option trade. Um, Home Depot, they report earnings on, um, on Tuesday. And so we're putting puts in on them at about a 6x profit multiple um, with a risk of uh, about four bucks a share. So I'm like ridiculously excited about that because dude, like you can literally turn, you know what, 400 bucks into like 2,400, 300 bucks, three grand. It's just, it's just really, really solid hot upside if you know what the hell you're doing. Um, and so that's why I get super passionate about like in trade. I'm teaching people that because I have clients right now and they're like literally doing that trade times, um, times a hundred, times a thousand, times a hundred. And so it's like, you know, like six figures um, in the span of like two or three days, which is like, ah, so cool. Um, and so to think that like I can share that with people, like that's so powerful, right? Um, and that's something that I just want to get out to as many people as I can, right? And that's why like I give all this stuff away for free for you guys. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, I got to record an options course. Um, I have this camera for, you know, 40, uh, probably, probably 36 hours by the time I was thinking about that. I'm like, all right, well, what should I do? So I spend, um, here's, the, here's a good geek, geeky concept. You want to spend, you know, a solid chunk of your time Think about the guy who's trying to cut down a tree all day and he just keeps whacking and whacking and whacking at his tree with a, uh, with a dull axe. Um, and then Abe Lincoln came up to him and he said, what are you doing, man? He's like, oh, I've been cutting down this tree for 12 hours. And he's like, hey, have you thought about sharpening your axe? And this, this guy, he slumberjack, he says, of course not, are you kidding? Look how busy I am cutting down this tree. And all the while, you know, he's just mashing, mashing, mashing against this tree with a totally dull axe. I mean, it's like he's hitting it with a block of wood. It's just, it's, it's been so... Um, sort of hammered down. And even though it was like halfway there, by the time he got halfway there, he just totally destroyed the sharpness in his, in his tool, right? Um, but he wasn't willing to take that 10% of time that it takes to take a minute and just sharpen it. So what Abe Lincoln said he would do is he said he would spend the first 90% of his time learning how to sharpen the ass for the first 10 hours, for the first 11 hours. And then he would spend the last 10%, the last one hour, cutting down the tree. Now, I want you to think about how you can apply that into all aspects of your education and your learning and your growth. Because do you want to be like the person who's, you know, bashing a hand axe, bashing a rock against a tree, trying to cut it over, trying to break it down? Or do you want to be the person that has spent 10 hours maybe building a freaking chainsaw and then slices through it like butter in about five seconds flat? Um, because like there's so many opportunities out there to just invest in your education. And then become a chainsaw so that when you start, you're starting light years ahead of the people that just go straight into it. And that's why, like, this idea of investing in education, investing in, you know, asset, the, the number one asset, which is, of course, yourself, right? Um, like, I would rather spend, you know, years of my life learning how to become insanely successful and then go out there and apply it than start it like nothing and then try to, like, grind my way up the McDonald's supply chain for 40 years, like... That's insane, right? And so it's the same concept for people that are going to college, right? It's the idea that, you know, you're investing in future, you're investing in yourself, um, sometimes in questionable industries. I don't know, man, about some of these um, degrees, and I don't want to, like, diss on anybody particularly, but, like, I don't know, some of them are, I don't know, I don't know, man, I don't know about some of them. Um, I wrote about it in 9 to Noon a little bit, this idea of, like, a higher education bubble, because there are like some things where it's like, you know, computer engineering or, or architecture. Like, yeah, you know, you need a, you need a degree. I mean, if you want to be like a nuclear engineer, like you need to know your shit. Um, but then there's other stuff. It's, it's like English. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know what you learned in English, man. Um, did you start the school year learning or did you start the school year knowing English? Yeah. Okay. Did you end the school year knowing English? Yeah. Okay. And I don't know, I kind of feel bad saying because I have a lot of really good friends who are like national best-selling poets. And so, like, I know there's a lot of depth to it. I don't know. I'm kind of like, I, I just don't know, man. It's all, it's all relative, right? It's all about perspective. So, definitely not, oh man, area of expertise. Uh, but just something to ponder, you know, like focusing on, I'm just going to have like, 
that 20% is going to lead to 80% of impact. Um, that 20% of be education, be growth, whatever. Um, but anyway, you want to make sure that you're spending your time, what, you're spending your time sharpening that sword. Um, and so that was my, that was my goal, right? So I spent a, a solid chunk of time, like, mapping out and actually, like, planning the, uh, the course. Let me, uh, let me get past this weed blower. Uh, or this, oh, what a nice guy. Thank you. <sighs> oh, man. Um, because what happens in a, in a lot of, uh, courses that, that teach options is we focus on like the griefs and like crap that like literally doesn't matter like ever. Um, I maybe I use theta like five percent of the time, which is just the decay of the option over time per day. But like most of that crap, honestly, most of the griefs, like dude, like that's that it just doesn't matter. What matters is is being able to know where the stock is gonna go. Um, and so like, you wanna understand sort of like what's actually going on with the company. And if you can predict accurately like where the company's gonna go, then you'll have huge success with the options, right? Like that's a given. Um, it's not about like trying to figure out, okay, well what's the, you know, volatility, the, I don't know, it's just, it's just a lot of, I don't know, there's a whole lot of planning and a whole lot of thought um, that went into the content and, I, and that, that course, right? Um, which is like totally for free for nine new members, which is super, super awesome. Oh crap, am I okay? I'm okay. I'm good? I'm good. Tires are a little messed up on the chain, but it's all good, it's all good. And so, whew. So this time I'm planning it and I say, okay, I got like um, 30 hours left, 30, 29 hours, something like that. Um, now I'm gonna be all in on this project. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And I realize I have um, you know, class at like eight and it's like um, probably like the middle of the day. And so I go to like all my classes for the day. Um, I get home and I say, all right, hey. Oh, not too far, just a, another block or three. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. I really appreciate it. I don't know. I just kind of like slid. Um, yeah. Yeah. Aw, thank you guys. You're so sweet. Yeah. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. And so it's like, there's like 12 hours left. And I'm like, okay, I'm turn this camera in tomorrow. Um, let's make it happen. And so I, I get a, uh, a giant tub of protein powder and some MCT oil uh, powder, which is like, oh my God, guys, pure, like coconut fat is just like pure energy. Oh man, it's so good. Um, <laughs> and, um, oh, so I, 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 bring a, I bring my blender bottle and I bring these like two, you know, huge things of like, you know, protein and, and, and fat and just supplements. Um, and I, I get a, uh, I get a studio for the night and I just sit there with the cameras and I just record and record and record for, um, uh, the next probably 16 hours. I mean, it was definitely like probably, probably like 14, 16 hours. I got really tired at the end. Um, cause I've literally not slept like at all, which is like, ah, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so like. I just like keep recording and going and okay, this is not good. I think my bike got stuck. That's not good. Um, I think we might be carrying the bike home because the wheels do not move, which is not optimal. But you know what, guys, we can carry a bike. It's not that big a deal. You just have to take these issues as challenges, right? It is a challenge of my strength. Can I carry this? Probably like 150 pounds. I don't know how heavy this bike is, but it's not a light bike. Oh man, it's not a light bike. Um, but anyway, basically, I just sit there and, um, you well, I don't sit there, I stand because I'm going hardcore. Um, but I'm just recording this course. Oh my gosh, this heavy bike for uh, like basically like the entire night into the next day. And what's cool is like I have a hard deadline, right? So class the next day starts at like four or not four, eight. And so like, I have to get this done uh, by the next day. Um, 
because that's what the cameras do, right? And so here's the deal, right? You want to approach your deadlines as if they are like immovable, like under any circumstances, any situation, it just cannot be altered at all ever, right? And so for me, like there's no thought in my mind of, oh, well, I can, you know, finish this next week or some crap like that. Like, no, all right? Not an option. Not, ouch, 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 ouch. Not gonna happen. Like, it's gotta happen right here, right now. And I take my game plan, and um, if you guys are watching the course, watching the modules, uh, the nine to noon, uh, members area, it's, it's really funny. You can see like there's, there's the two whiteboards, right? Um, and I like very, very carefully wrote down like all of the topics for all the lessons, like above where the cameras would look at the mic, uh, look at the whiteboards and below where the cameras looked at the whiteboards. And so like the top margins of all the whiteboards and the bottom margins of all the whiteboards are just like the lesson plans. Um, and the whole strategy that I sort of been uh, developing on how I'm going to like teach how to be insanely great at options, um, which is a fun little, a fun little, uh, piece of info trivia there for you. Um, if you're going through the course, which is awesome, like, oh my God, that stuff's so cool. It'll change your life. Um, <laughs> and so like, I would just teach and teach and teach and teach for hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, and as you get to the end of it, like, you know, this isn't, this isn't particularly new. Like when I, ouch, it was a rock. Um, when I was, you know, writing nine to noon, I would spend, you know, literally like weekends and weekends and weekends, like 30, 60, probably not 60 hours, but like definitely like I would pull like all nighters or, or I would go like literally like going, I would wake up and just write like all day, um, for just the writing part of the book. But when I got the publishing week, um, that was big, right? Because I had, um, you know, publicly committed to a deadline. I said, you know what? I'm going to publish this book by January 29th. And that was my like big public, and like I told all my friends that because I finished writing, blah, 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 blah. my writing deadline right was was Christmas Eve, and so, um, oh man, this is heavy. <sighs> okay, ooh, and so um, I wanted to get it turned around by January 29th because I wanted to sort of include it in like all my college applications, which were like due basically like February 12th, I think, or the like, second week of February, something like that. I don't know. Um, I forget. That was a long time ago. And so I was like, okay, well, that's the date. It's got to happen. And so like I told all my friends, everyone I knew, they're like, this is getting done by this date, um, which is awesome because then like a bunch of them helped me edit it, which was so sweet, so kind. Um, ooh. And, um, and anyway, the, the, everything got done. I mean, you see the publishing date was January 28th. Um, it wasn't necessarily done on January 28th, but it was freaking published on the 28th. Um, and there were some minor revisions and drafts for the next couple of days, but it was out there. People bought the first copy of it. Um, they, uh, they got some nice surprises. There were just a couple of typos and stuff like that, but, but thankfully everything's been cleared up now. And oh my God, it's so much fun. So exciting. Um, but it happened. You said a deadline and it'll happen. So that's sort of exactly what I did. I said, you know what? Like this course has to happen. Um, but anyway, the point of that story was like, um, up until publishing date, um, and going up to that deadline, like literally I was up for probably like 48, 72 hours. I mean, like I just didn't sleep for like two or three days. Um, because I was just like staring and I feel so bad about it now because I learned that like you can just hire people to format your book and, and it's just so much cheaper. Um, but I didn't know that. Right. And so I was doing like all the formatting and, and all the proofreading by hand. And, you know, searching through the whole document for like double periods or double spaces and all this stuff that I really, I mean, if you guys are like writing books, like it's so, <sighs> would it save me so, so much time. And it's so much cheaper um, in your own time value just to hire people. Like it is a very tedious, tedious thing to do to like actually edit a book. Like, oh my God, especially if you start to get like over the 80 or 90, uh, 100,000 word range um, with the citations, it was like 115,000. Like, oh my God, it's just so much. <sighs> oh, seriously. This is a really heavy bike, guys. Back tire is just, I mean, it's just like exploded, dude. Like the tire didn't explode, but like the whole wall just like ripped off. I have to fix that. Wow. Ouch. Oh, man. I wish the tire didn't go flat. Oh, I'm totally my fault for not feeling it. Oh. Whew. 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 And so, whew. with this course, like, same thing, right? I have to get this done by this date. Like there's no other option. All right. This camera is due on Wednesday and there's no way I'm going to disappoint and like hold it later or get in trouble. I mean, there's be like huge fees if I did that. 
So I just stay up for hours and hours and hours all night. And you kind of see as the course progresses, like at the beginning, it's probably like eight or 10 at night or no, wait, um, it's probably like five in the four or five in the afternoon is when the filming, I don't know. I think I started at like lunchtime, right? And so I start the course and there's like people everywhere in the cafeteria and the glass, <gasps> ooh, the glass walls um, in the commons era. Oof. And then as time goes on through the course, you can just kind of like see the, the sunset outside. And then I'm just like in total darkness, except obviously like there's lighting in the studio. Um, and I bought like big lights and stuff and just teaching everything. But it's just like, it's dead. Cause it's like all night. We went through like the whole night and just like didn't sleep. Um, by the end of the course, like in some of the last modules, ouch, in some of the last modules, like I can't even keep my eyes open. And I'm still trying to teach about like butterfly spreads. <laughs> and <laughs> I just think back at it now and, and it's, it's just hilarious. Oh man. But it's this idea that like, you know, if you're going to get stuff done, like you, you, you just like may as well go all in and make it happen. Um, and no compromise, man, no compromise. And the moment that you start doing that, like everything shifts. Because instead of like working and working and working with sort of no actual progress, like you start to be able to have tremendous amounts of progress, like half the work because your output is like 10 times greater in the same period of time. Like if I was to um, record, I'm part of the, you know, um, you guys probably heard the episode a little bit ago um, where I was talking with one of the seminar attendees um, for, for like the How to Find Influence People seminar, which is like super, super cool. And like, you know, the ponies and ah, I got so excited. Ah, so fun. Oh my God, changed my life. So excited about it. Um, like if I tried to do that um, as a course or as a, uh, as a training over, you know, my time um, and just do it at my own pace, ouch, 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 ouch. It probably have taken like weeks, right? Um, but when you do it like with public accountability and um, you have like a hard set deadline of like, look, I've got to teach this stuff in a, a three-day seminar. Um, I'll be honest. I, I got to be honest, guys. Like there was some really amazing, amazing content in that seminar. And so we got through maybe 75% of it, but like honestly, we didn't finish it on time because there was just so much gold in there. Um, that they wanted me to unpack and that I did unpack and, and, um, so I still have to finish some of the bonuses for that, um, which is great. I still get to, right. You don't have to, you get to finish some of the bonuses. Um, you get to do more and you get to be more and you get to serve more. I remember my dad was like, you know, why are you doing all this extra stuff? And I'm like, dude, you, you have to give so, so, so much more than you ask from others. And if you do that, like you'll create raving fans. Um, and it just, it just changes absolutely everything, right? Which is just awesome, ridiculously cool, um, super exciting. Because like, you know, the bike goes flat, you gotta like walk home. You know, if you wanna get a ride from somebody, um, but I, I, I probably gotta get a ride. Those, those people are pretty freaking nice. Like, they're probably, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm here for you guys. I'm making this podcast for you guys because you're special. Um, You've, you've got to have like commitment to, to do more and to be more, you know? Um, and I remember this, this one story that I, that I think just totally, totally changed everything when I, when I heard it. Um, and you guys have got to follow me on Instagram because like most of my target audience is on Instagram. Right. And like, I don't like social media. Like, I don't know. Social media is fun. Um, sort of, I don't know, but like, I know like ton, ton of my dream clients are on, on over there. So like, <sighs> doing a ton of work on that stuff. And I remember and this one thing that just totally changed everything. Um, there's this river in the Amazon, okay? And it, this guy, he he spent like literally decades of his life searching and, and searching village to village, literally trying to find this river. Um, and people thought he was crazy. They thought that he had as much a chance of finding this river as he did of discovering the city of gold. Um, and they were just like, dude, this is bogus you know you're never gonna find this mythical place it doesn't exist it's not real and after searching for years and years and years of his life he gets to this end of the journey and he's sitting at this dining table with his uncle at this restaurant and he's like dude i feel so distraught and so destroyed i've been searching for this river for my whole life and i just can't I mean, he's a young guy and i just can't find it 
And he's like, okay, well, can you explain this river? And he's like, yes, the river is a boiling river. And it can be seen from hundreds of feet away, miles away. The steam from it is so huge, so impactful, so massive. This is a boiling river and the water is hot to the touch. It is hundreds of degrees. Um, and the steam from it will expand you so much because this is a boiling river. And it was this myth or this, this uh, story of a boiling river. And his uncle, out of the thousands of people that he had talked to in the past couple of decades, was like, oh, no way, you heard of the Boiling River? Yeah, your aunt has been there. Um, she can tell you where it is and show you where it is. And this guy's like, what? Are you serious? You're telling me you know where this, this, this river is? Um, oh, man, Oof. a little bit of a hill. Because so often, the answer is staring you right in the face. It was his family member who knew where this boiling river was. And yet he was trying to search through like tons and tons of these like mystical, you know, villages in the middle of nowhere. Oh, excuse me. It's a, it's a heavy bike. And he's asking like these, these villagers in like nowhere land, like where they could possibly think these, um, this, this mystical village is. And or this this river, and they're like, dude, we don't know. And he asked thousands of these people where to go. And then he has dinner with his uncle when he's on the verge of quitting. And as then he just has this epiphany, he has the discovery. He meets his aunt, and his aunt's like, yes, this is where you need to go. And so they go to this village in like the middle of the Amazon jungle. And the villagers say, yes, we will take you to the boiling river. And so they, um, they bring them into the forest and they start walking and walking. And for days, uh, this guy, he just walks um, through, the, through the river. And, um, or not through the river, he just walks through the forest, right? And just keeps going and going and going deeper and deeper. And eventually, you know, they get kind of tired. So they uh, set up camp. <laughs> for the night um, and they, you know, they go to sleep uh, and then the next day they get up um, and they keep walking, walking deeper and deeper into the Amazon jungle. Um, and this guy, I mean, I would be so scared if I was him because it's like, dude, you don't know who like is, is this guy to you. You know, he just met these villagers. Like, I don't know, man, it's really sketch. Um, uh, ooh, excuse me. But then, excuse me, he, um, he starts to see in the, in the distance on the horizon, he sees some steam. Um, just this big, 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 like, trench of steam, like, floating above the trees, above the, um, above the shrubs, above the whole, you know, forest. There's just this massive, massive steam uh, cloud. And he's like, what is that? And the man says, that is the boiling river. So they walk and they walk and they walk. And he can now see something that he's literally been working on for years, for a decade, to discover. And as he approaches this mystical, amazing, amazing place, he comes up to it. He walks up to the boiling river. And this river is, is literally you know, thousands of degrees uh, because of geothermal energy. And it's, it's, it's insane. You can put your hand next to it. You put your hand even remotely close to it. And it, 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 you can burn yourself, right? Like if you fall in, like you'll probably get boiled alive. Um, it's just so, so, so hot. And there's like steam just, just coming off it like, constantly, right? Um, because um, whew, it's just so, 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 so hot and it's constantly boiling. And this river, he discovers it and he walks sort of, you know, towards its essence. And his, his whole, like, light, all of his lungs, you know, his nose, everything he has, his nostrils, are, like, purified by this magical, hot, like, burning, boiling river. Um, and it's, like, this, this concept that he would have never, ever, ever felt before, but he, he finally found it. Um, and he, he uncovered the boiling river. And he freaking made it to his goal and had the success he wanted. Um, and... What I think is crazy, like, besides the fact that there's a thousand degree river somewhere in the middle of the Amazon, um, is the concept of what this river represents, right? So, 
whew, there, um, there's this, this idea that you have to be persistent, right? There's also this idea that you really, really, really want to have like your, your power and your, your impact and your growth. Uh, and so because of that, like you, there's this, this um, tendency to always want to punch the wall at a thousand percent or go towards that goal at a thousand percent and just like, you know, spend hundreds of millions of, not hundreds of billions of dollars, like this oil fracking guy trying to, um, you know, build up some new tech or push through with a new problem. Um, but then there's no, there's no persistence, right? Like if you're, um, say for instance, like if I'm trying to do a hundred meter dash, like I can't keep up my hundred meter dash pace for a marathon. It just, it just won't happen. Right. And so what you need is not only power, but also, also persistence, right? Um, now, of course, you have to have a mix, right? Like, I can't just run a marathon walking, right? That's not going to work. You get coach, you'll pop out of the bush, you'll say, well, why are you walking? And I'll say, I don't know, man, can't walk. It's not a good thing to do, right? You have to, you know, give your all, right? Oh, God, this tire is really heavy. Ugh. Okay. And so there's this huge, 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 huge concept of having both power and persistence. And I think that's so, so, so well stayed in this river. So this river, again, it's thousands of degrees. Um, and it's just boiling. It's constantly boiling. And so it's been eroding away this, uh, this, this jungle and this riverbed for, for literally centuries. Um, and the way it does that is by, you know, normal rivers, right? Normal rivers, they flow over the rocks and they erode them away. But what this river does is it combines constant everyday persistence day in day out the river's flowing just like every other river it combines that with power and with strength and instead of just being normal water that would normally break down the rocks it's thousand degree water it's boiling hot water i mean there's like air bubbles just constantly boiling out of this water um and so what it does is it literally like is a hundred times more effective at eroding away the river and there's like the whole river base and the base of the, the whole area surrounding this water has just been breaking down so, 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 so quickly over time relative to other rivers because the temperature is huge. It's just ridiculously hot. And so the key concept here is to be like that boiling river and have long-term persistence working towards your overarching goals. And at the same time, have a ridiculous amount of fire inside you that keeps you boiling hot so that you can have a level of impact that is like exponentially greater than others in, in the marketplace and what they're doing by simply being what more intense more energetic what's the difference between <sighs> freezing cold water what's the difference between freezing cold water and boiling water what's the difference between a, a river in you know um, Alaska which is a really cool place and um, you know this boiling river in the, in the Amazon. The only difference between these water molecules or between these uh, liquids is energy, right? The only thing that separates them is how much energy they have. <laughs> what? Oh no! I'm sorry, guys. Ugh. Got some dogs. But you see, it's cool, right? It's like, whoa. <laughs> this sidewalk is totally leaking into the street. <laughs> That's not good, man. Ooh, ouch. Okay. So, I think we escaped. So, the goal, right, is, is to have persistence and power, right? And to do both, right? To be, you know, both, you know, super hyper, super energetic, super pumped. And at the same time, just doing the same thing day in, day out. Um, and that all comes from what? It comes from like, the power habit, right? Um, which is just all oh, so cool and so amazing. You just have to keep, keep pushing, keep going, um, which is just like awesome. So, oh, oh man, this is a heavy bike. Uh, they didn't cross the street here from Lucky. Ooh. Oh man. Okay. I'll make a break for it. Ah. Ooh. Uh. Ouch. Okay. Whew. Um, which is just like, ah, so, 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 so cool. Um, so like try to, try to like achieve that power and, and conquer that, that state. So that instead of, you know, just, just wheezing along, 
you're actually having like a massive, massive impact on everyone that, that you, you know, come in contact with, um, just purely based on doing more than a vast majority of uh, people in the market. And I mean, once you do that, like, dude, you're just gonna, just gonna crush it! Oh, it's just so, so, so exciting. Ooh, ooh, oh, it's heavy, buddy. Um, so going back to like what we were talking about earlier, this idea of um, risk reward ratio. So, ooh, I gotta do some math on this because I'd say it probably takes like what an hour and a half to walk home. Um, and so, like, if ten, if that happens, what ten percent of the time, you're looking at on average, you know, an extra like thirteen minutes uh, of travel time per per bike ride, right? And so, if it takes me you know, about an hour, maybe 50 minutes to like, bike to school and back. And then, you know, another 15 minutes, just based on this thing breaking down 10% of the time, which kind of sucks. Um, looking like an hour of, of, of time that is just kind of whooshed away. Um, and you have to bring in a question, like what is your value on, on your time? For me, like there's nothing more important. So. Like when I look at like me, like almost falling asleep, giving some of these last modules in this course, like the thing that pushes me to do that is uh, just the insane, insane, insane drive to help masses of people create real savings and retirements. And yet that drive, like it can't like make you a superhuman for, for temporary periods of time. Sure. But like, you know, you, you've got to sleep, you've got to buy your sleep. Um, and you all like, for me, like. Like, I just, I don't want to give courses where I'm, like, half asleep because, oh, my gosh, right? You know, you've got to be, like, in it. And so, oh, it's heavy. Whew. Um, it's so important, like, to just get, like, enough sleep. And, you know, I don't know, you know, how much sleep you need. But, like, for me, it's, like, eight hours, man. Just need that sleep. Um, and so, like, do I want to spend an hour of my day, um, which then translated into an hour gone. And then, you know, worst case scenario, it translated into... An hour less of sleep, um, you know, how's that really going to affect me? And, and for most places, like, it's going to mess me up. If I miss an hour of sleep one night, I'll sleep, like, an extra four hours the next night. And so, like, it, it just, it, it destroys, like, you know, five plus hours of, of productivity and of, of productivity just out the window. Um, because, like, for me, like, I just, I just, I don't know, you got to sleep the function. Um, and maybe it's because, like, I don't know, like, you, I, I'm kind of jealous. Because, like, once you start to get a little bit older, like, I'm pretty sure... You can just like sleep like way less, which is like so cool. Um, I tried doing that thing where you like nap every hour for 20 minutes, uh, but I think you have to be kind of older to do that because it totally messed me up really hardcore after like 48 hours. Um, but also I guess the first week of like doing new things is toughest, right? Because you're establishing a new habit. So I might try that again sometime soon. We'll see. Um, it's pretty sweet. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Like, you, you literally, like, increase your productive hours in the day, like, by six, which is, oh, man, just a lot of cool stuff there. Oh, gosh, this is a heavy bike. But, like, you got to have control of your schedule and stuff. Um, it's sort of the best way to do that. It's just to, like, you know, be yourself, be your leader um, and have the stuff you want. So just a lot of, like, really, really cool kind of powerful things here um, that I sort of wish, sort of understood, like, a, a long, long, long time ago. Um, and hopefully you guys sort of understand this and get a ton of value from it, which is so, so, so cool. There's like a really busy street around the corner. Um, and I don't want you guys to have to like listen to traffic while I'm talking over it. So I'm very close to home. I, I, uh, I'm super, super excited, super happy uh, to make this course and having the best day ever. So I hope you guys go out there and you have the best day ever. You can apply this and have tons and tons of success and impact and development and growth. And just freaking crush it. Um, because the moment you just crush it, I mean, like everything is just so much better. Um, so thank you guys so, so, so much for listening. Um, definitely like, oh gosh, check out all these resources. I mean, everything here is just a game changer. Um, and some really, 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 really cool stuff today. So hope you guys um, really enjoyed it and go out there, apply it, absolutely crush it. And I will see you in the next episode. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. okay guys, I'm so sorry. Um, so I just got back, but like I totally, totally forgot um, to tell you about what happened at the cross country banquet. And I feel off about it because it's a really, really, really good principle you can learn from it. Um, and so I'm just going to give you guys a little bonus here at the end, um, which is like super, super important, super powerful. Ooh, I tried to get this bike up an elevator. <laughs> oh man. Um, so, so like I said, I get on, um, this, this like big stage and I go up to the talk 
um, about, you know, cross country or, or track and just, and just coach and learning and whatever. Um, and, and I get up there and I want to tell you guys the story I told you that night, um, because I think it totally changed, um, just everything in my life and sort of, if you take it and apply it, like it can change everything in your life. And I know like that night it had a huge impact on, on everybody that was, was there. Um, and so, so here's what happened, right? So, um, I have, oh, it's a heavy bike. Okay. So it would like in cross country season, right? We would run, you know, like probably, I don't know, 10 miles a day, uh, for practice. And we would run like, no matter what, like it didn't matter what the weather was. It didn't matter what season it was, what temperature it was. Um, we, we would run every single day. Um, and it was just ridiculously great. I mean, we had literally like some of the best runners, um, in the state and we did like amazing. It was super cool because like we trained hard, right? And so if you train hard, you're gonna, you're gonna perform well, right? In, in anything that you do, you know, investing sports doesn't matter. Um, you know, the, the, the more you train, like the bigger impact you're gonna have, the more success you'll have. And so it was one day when, uh, you know, school ended and we would all sort of drive to, to practice because, um, it was kind of a little bit away from school. We'd run sort of, you know, at this, um, at this space. It was sort of like a, a big park, right? Um, except there was like a ton of side paths. And so, and then we'd also run at this farm. So we ran this one day we were going to the farm. Um, and so, <gasps> oof, excuse me. Everyone, you know, drives, they get in their car, leave school. And we go and we drive to the farm. And sometimes when there's lightning and stuff, like we won't run just because it's dangerous. Um, so on the way to practice while everyone's driving, like it just starts pouring. Um, and the weather said it was going to like pour for like four hours, which he totally, totally did. Um, and so by the time everyone gets there, like everything is soaking wet and it's like just pouring outside. I mean, we step out of our cars and oh man, that's heavy. Um, we step out of the car and, and it, I mean, everyone is just instantly soaked. Um, because it is so, so, so rainy outside. It's just, it's just insane. Um, and so we, we get there. Well, and I mean, like. If you like put a newspaper out, outside of the door, I mean, it probably would like just like fade away. I mean, melt like it was. It was so wet. There were like floods. Oh, ah! <laughs> there were floods um, on all the trails that we normally ran, um, and like the streets were flooding, and and there were just it was like so 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 much rain, but there wasn't any lightning or anything. Uh, and so, whew, let me take a seat. Oh my gosh! So. We get there and there's just, there's just, it's like pouring, torrential downpour everywhere. I mean, it's just insane how much, how much rain there was. Like, oh my gosh. And coach is like, everybody get out of your car and let's get warm enough. So we all warm up. And by the time we finish warming up, I mean, like, like it looks like everybody just got out of the swimming pool. Um, it's just so, so, so much rain, so wet. It's, it's insane. Um, how, how much, how much is this stuff? Um, was just, it was just everywhere, dude. It was just crazy. And so we all are standing out there just like drenched. Um, and coach is like, all right, good job guys. So the plan today, you know, normal day, we're going to do, um, you know, relays, repeats, whatever, run a bunch. Um, I think, I don't know. It was just like, go and run like five miles or, or something like that. I don't remember. It was, a, it was a long, long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, he's just like, go run guys. Um, and practice. And I, I think we were supposed to do like eight miles, something like that. Um, it was just like a normal run because like he was like, dude, it's really raining outside. So it was like, okay, yeah, no big deal. Um, we won't do, you know, a, a normal thing. We'll just, um, we'll just do like a, you know, an easy run, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and so easy paces, you, you, know, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, two minutes over race pace, something like that. Um, which is super cool, super fun. And, and you, you know, you, you get going and you just do it. Right. And it's, it's ridiculously cool. Um, so we start running, everyone's running and we just go for like hours and hours and hours, um, by hours and hours, I mean like an hour and a half, um, maybe two hours, just like a normal run. And the thing is like, everyone is so wet that the whole thing, I mean, it's like literally we're like in a swimming pool. Um, and like, we're just drenched everyone, like, you know, boys, girls, whatever, like the hair was just, it was just water. Like everyone was just like water everywhere. Um, and all of our shoes were just like soaked. Um, like nobody had any clothes on by the end of it, just because like everything was so wet and it's just so difficult to run in wet, like cotton and, oh my God. So like, oh my, it was really fun. I mean, no one had like the shirt side. We were like basically just swimming. It was really cool. Um, cause it was just raining for the entire time you're running. 
just a torrential downpour. But coach, like he just would not, like he didn't let up, man. He's not, he's not gonna let up. You know, you gotta keep going. You gotta keep pushing. You gotta keep going to your limit and going to your brink um, to really grow yourself and expand yourself as a person. Um, and that's, that's sort of exactly, sort of exactly what happened. Um, and so, oh, it feels so good. Um, we get, uh, we just keep running. He's just like, keep running, keep running, keep running. And we're like, dude, are you serious? It's like, so it's pouring, dude. You, you, that's insane. Um, and he's pushing us and pushing us and pushing us. And then it gets to the end of practice and, and we finish and we, we cool down, you know, run like a mile or, or a mile and a half, cool down. And, um, and everyone sits back and we realized that like, you know, wow, you know, we did that. You know, we made it happen. We actually had the, the success. We had the growth. We actually freaking did it. Because the only thing that was stopping us from, from doing, you know, this, this, this run um, and having this workout was, very simply put, our minds. Um, and as I reflected on this on stage, I realized that, like, this waterfall of torrential rain that was just coming on us, what it really represented was so much more than just water. It was instead, like, all the challenges and the roadblocks and the difficulties that we faced. And the moment that we stopped looking at this rain as a problem and we started looking at it as a challenge to overcome, we were able to totally shift our mindsets away from this is awful to this is a pleasurable thing to do. Because looking back at it, like, it was super cool because, like, it was raining, so you got to, like, get chilled off while you're running. And it was just really, really fun to just splash around in giant puddles and get muddy and messy. And I mean, it was just a great time looking back at it. And at the time, the way that you get that perspective of happiness and joy is by looking at your issues, the challenge, the problem, right? And it changes absolutely everything. And sort of the most important takeaway from this and the big thing I focused on um, at this event, which I think is huge, and I think you guys take away from this, is that like the toughest times are the ones that grow you more than anything else. And there is nothing else in these kids' lives or in my life at the time that really pushed me to my physical limit and maybe expand what I thought in my mind was my limit and push me to a whole new level of success and achievement that I originally would never even imagine possible. And that was all because in the face of a challenge, we stepped up and I was forced to step up. And these other guys, they were all forced to step up to succeed and to grow and to freaking power through. And, and now, you know, you look at it in the past and it's like, oh, that challenge, easy. I can do it, no problem. Because you've been there and you've done that and you've made it happen. And it expands your comfort zone by going out of your comfort zone. And so all you have to do to expand your comfort zone is to go out of your comfort zone and do things that are absolutely awesome and it'll totally change everything because now you'll be empowered to do 10 times more in, in all aspects of your life, right? Like it's not just fitness that this changed for these kids or for me, it changed everything I thought was possible because it made me realize that like all the challenges and all the issues I faced, you know, when um, this was, um, this was, this was this, 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 yeah. So this was like right sort of like uh, maybe like four or five months after I, I published Nine to Noon, um, but way, way, way before I started like actually, maybe it was two months after, I don't remember. Um, but it was, it was like, it made me realize that like there's so much more potential and so much more growth and so much more impact that I can have um, if I just focus on, on growing and going and going and going and getting to that next level. Um, oh, I made it home. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I hope you guys can take this um, and really, really apply it and push yourself to that limit. Keep on going and, and going and going and going because the moment that you want to quit, the moment where you think it's really, really difficult and there's just no way you're going to succeed, like that's the moment where you're going to have the biggest breakthrough. You're going to have the biggest impact. You're going to have the biggest growth, development, and success um, out of all aspects of your learning because like the most difficult things are the most rewarding. And and that challenge and that growth, it literally stretched, you know, what these guys thought, what I thought was possible um, by a degree that we've, we've never been able to see. Uh, or, or really, it was just, just an amazing, amazing experience. And though it's painful at the time, um, you know, it's, it's, and it's not particularly, you know, joyful to go through that. But afterwards, it's so, 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 so worth it. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to really, you know, push yourself to the next level, and um and realize that there's so much more out there like oh my god i hit the same but like pain you know like run 15 miles in the rain um and it's it's in torrential downpour uh downpour and it just it just changes everything because you realize if you can do that you know you can do anything so 
That's the belief I want you guys to have. That's the conviction I want you to have. There is no limit. It's all you. So thank you guys so much. I, I hope you uh, enjoyed this bonus section. Um, super, super fun stuff. And I'm glad that we uh, we got to sort of go over it together. Um, it was cool. You know, he came off stage and gave Coach Hug, great guy. Because he grew these kids in a way that literally no one else would. Um, no one else is going to push these guys to their physical limits and make them see themselves as more than what they truly are. Because, like, it's so powerful. The moment you can see yourself as more than you are right now, you have a limitless exponential growth curve in your life. And it's all you. The moment that you realize that right now is just a, a temporary reflection of you on your journey, on your path to your goals. It's your overarching long-term success. So, really cool stuff, guys. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, and I gave you an outro earlier. Um, but I just wanted to give you this because it's, it's very special. So hope you can apply. Hope you have an amazing, amazing day. And I'm going to go record the uh, Highland Friendly Influence People course, which is ah, so exciting. Um, and hopefully you guys can get some of that uh, as a 90 new client. So thanks so much. And I will see you in this podcast. Bye. Thanks. Want more stock market secrets? If so, go get your free copy of my best-selling book, 9 to Noon. You can get your free copy plus $11,176 of unannounced bonuses. It took me years to uncover completely for free at 9toNoonSecrets.com. Inside 9 to Noon, you'll find the top 38 secrets you can use to double your portfolio every two years and make upwards of 10% per trade daily.